Welcome everyone to the special budget workshop meeting. I'm calling this meeting to order. The time is now 3.01 p.m. Um, if anybody from the public wants to see their comments, uh, the sheets are all over there on that table. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please take roll? Council member, member Gomez. Council member, member Gomez here. <laughs> Council member, member uh, Hernandez. Oh, no. Yeah, member Hernandez. Here. Council member, member McQueen was on. Here. Uh, member Robert Blackwell. Here. Uh, member Donnie Brown is absent. And Mayor Pro Tem Vice Chair Fred. Here. And Mayor Chair Martinez. Present. All right, so soon participants, please use the raise your hand feature if you would like to comment. Comments are limited to three minutes. And again, for anybody in the public present here, there are some sheets over there to submit a public comment over there to my left. Madam Clerks, does anybody have a public comment tonight? There are no public comments. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, never mind. Okay, we're good. Yeah. So our first business item is biannual budget fiscal years for 2023-2024 and 2024-2025 workshop. Will staff please present the report? Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the biennial budget. I'm Lisa Ferro, Finance Director, and I would like to thank you for your time this afternoon to go over the budget. And we'd also like to take get some time to thank, thank the budget team, our uh, Tony Stewart, and our city manager, my staff, Ashley Chaparro, uh, County Manager, Angela. Accountant and really everyone on the staff who played a critical role in putting this budget together. Um, you'll see when I go through the presentation, we have a balanced budget, and everyone really took the time to go through and be very diligent and the appropriations that we asked um, so that it's super clear in order to have a balanced budget. Um, so this is the agenda for this afternoon. I'm going to go over the proposed. Citywide operating budget, including general fund, enterprise and other special revenue funds, housing authority, uh, cover the capital improvement fund, and also talk about fund balances and the general fund resources. <coughs> the city uh, has been um, incorporated in, since 2017-2018 as a two-year budget, so we're on a biannual budget. We're going to be covering fiscal year 23, 24, FY24, and fiscal year 24, 25, FY25. Um, our city operates on a fiscal year, which is from July 1st through June 30th. And at mid cycle, so sometime around, sometime around spring of 2024, we'll be coming back to council um, to confirm the revenues and expenses for the second year of the budget. I have a lot of information to cover. Um, I intend to go through the slides and take questions at the end of the slide. Um, so if there are any questions, I will take them at the end of each slide because there is a lot of information to cover today. So this is an overview of the 23-24 proposed operating budget. Does that include CIP? The city and related entities budget is at $58.1 million. 26.5 is general fund. The enterprise and other funds, such as your special revenue fund, tax, um, gas tax, uh, 25.6, and then all the housing agency related funds at $6 million. Next, we'll take a look at the same information for the next year, which is for fiscal year 24-25. We have city and related entities at $57 million, so it's slightly less than the prior year by about a million dollars. General fund is at 26.8, so I want a little bit more, $200,000 more. And then enterprise and other funds at 24.2, and those are roughly about a million dollars less than the prior year. And most of that is, some of it is related to ARPA, ARPA is in the other funds, so we have some ARPA dollars. And 2324 in operating because we don't have those in 2425. And then some of it is enterprise funds. But, but for some reason, I thought the enterprise funds were combined at a bigger total than the, than the general fund. No? No? Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
So the enterprise funds are solid waste, water. Yeah, all the water you get is from the solid waste, um, Campus. water, water one, and uh, storage water. So there's three? Yeah, there's four. Four? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then that also includes all the pockets. Like the gas tax, our bus, a lot of the other smaller funds that we get the dollars that I have the account to do with and check the funds, that's also in that same little section of the budget. So the 10 million in ARPA funds or? No. All that is in, this is operating. Most of the ARPA is EIP, sort of the capital related projects. Okay. The only 565,000 is in the 23.4 solid waste. No okay. ARPA funds are in this section. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then housing is pretty uh, much the same as the other section. Okay. And so let's go and take a look at general funds. Um, and the general fund is the primary. Funding source for the city, which so I said that you know the community, you know safety, parks, recreation, um, school of the city, um, and I want to go over the sources of revenue from the general fund. If you um, <coughs> yeah, and so here are the primary sources for general fund. You know obviously we get sales taxes. Property taxes, cannabis revenue, franchise fees, licenses and permits, you know, fees and fines, you know, hotel taxes, grants, and then the rider share from the sources. So those are the primary um, revenue generating sources for the general fund. And then you can see the operating expenses, which are uh, basically all the requirements that I added up at the bottom here. Um, safety, land safety. Street projects, community service, administration, community development, and library service. When you say public safety, that's strictly the police department, right? It's just PD only. million dollars in general fund revenues. For next year, 23-24, we're projecting 26.9, really a growth of under a million dollars, $900,000 more. And then in 24-25, 27.3. So roughly a little bit over $300,000. And really the growth for this next year is really coming from a couple of buckets and I'm gonna go through it in more detail, but it's really some of it is sales tax related um, some of it is property taxes. We're uh, expecting a little bit more revenue from the port agreements. And then we're also expecting more interest revenue as the city's really looking at securing uh, an RFP or an agreement with an outside investment firm that will invest some of our liquid portfolio assets into some uh, investments that will generate additional interest revenue. Can I ask you a question real quick? Yes. You made a statement about you'll take questions at, each, at the end of each slide. Do you mean at the end of each slide that you're showing? Or you're going to get to a point to where you're going to start taking questions? No, if there are questions, please stop me from Okay, fast. all right. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we're on <laughs> No, I meant at the end of each slide, so if there are questions, I can answer. How many more slides do you know? Do you have on general fund? I have 36 slides. I you, okay, so I'll let you go ahead and go, because you may answer some of my questions. Okay. As you go. Yeah, this was just kind of to provide okay. an overview. Yeah. Um, and so the general fund revenues are conservative, um, but they're based on historical trends. Sorry to interrupt. Does that also include the projection that our cannabis tax money might go down? I will, yes, I'm gonna cover that. <laughs> yeah. So in this slide, we really just wanted to point out they're conservative and uh, we're looking at history, but also looking at trends, the state of the economy. Um, we contract out with HDL, who provides us sales taxes and uh, property tax projections. Obviously, they're looking at uh, the economic factors impacting the nation, Ventura County, and really for Wyoming and how some of our businesses are doing. And that's all factored into the sales, specifically the sales and taxes. Um, so if you see that some of the areas categories are uh, 
trending down, we made an adjustment and I'm gonna cover that. Um, these are the three largest sources of revenue for the general fund. Uh, sales and use taxes make up 28% of the general fund revenue or $7.6 million. Other taxes, uh, 17%, that's the vehicle tax, that is utility users tax, and that is the hotel taxes. Um, so that's about $4.6 million. And then property taxes is 11.4% or $3 million. So all that is about $50 million um, in uh, tax revenue. Did you say cannabis is in the sales use tax? So cannabis is in both because we, we get sales taxes as well from cannabis. We get the 5%, the okay. contractual, that one we book it separately, but then we get sales taxes on that. So that would be part of the, in the sales tax. Yeah. In the next slide, I wanted to really break out the sales taxes. <coughs> Bless you very Bless much. You. Bless you. Bless you. Sales taxes make up 28% of the general fund revenue. So sales taxes in the city are 8.75%. The city receives 2.5% of the taxes. So we receive 2.5 cents for every sales tax dollar. And the breakdown of that is basically we get 1%. Uh, that's the, the sales tax. We get the measure W tax, that's half a percent. And then we get the measure U tax, another percent. So that's your 2.5%. And the sales tax, the 1% is the Bradley tax. And you can see, I get to use my pointer. I order a pointer for this meeting, so I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can see in 22 23, which is this year, we had um, approved and projected 2.4, is what's in our budget. For 23 24, it's gone down slightly, about 1.5%. And that's because those are the sales taxes generated for sales in the city. And in conversations and discussions and reports with HDL, we are seeing a little bit of slowdown in some areas uh, like consumer goods, retail, electronics. So it looks like um, disposable income may be getting impacted a little bit from the inflation, high interest rates, and people are starting to pull back a little bit. So these projections are reflect a slight decrease in 23, 24, and then back up to 2.4 and 24, 25. The measure W and the measure U tax, if you look at the dollars, if you look at the dollars for the 1%, 2.4, and then 3.5, they're both 1% taxes, but the measure W and the measure U is the sales and use tax. And so the city gets tax um, on purchases that are made outside of the city, such as someone goes and buys a car in LA because they live here, we get that tax. And we also get the tax from online sales. And so that's the reason that those dollars are higher than the 1%. Um, <clears throat> any questions on this? Did you slide? talk about such? I'm sorry, I, I must have spaced out with Measure W. Did you talk about what, what the source of that, those taxes are? The Measure W is the half a percent special tax that passed, was effective April 1st, 2009. So that's 0.5%? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the measure U was effective April 1st, right. 2019. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just not familiar with measure W. Thank you. And then what happens to the other percent? So if we get 2.5, mm -hmm. who gets the other six and a quarter? Well, that's like the county. Yeah, I can get a breakdown for you for that. But yeah. It's county, state, and that? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's good distributed. It's a, it's a, it's actually goes into even tenths of a percent of school districts. So, yeah, yeah. Does Measure W run out? Or they don't it, sunset as far as I know. It does or does it? Does not. And same with Measure U. Correct. Does not sunset. And then on this next slide, I uh, wanted to share the property taxes. So property taxes make up 11.4% of general fund revenue, and the city receives just under 14 cents for each property tax dollar that is paid in the city for you know, tax value, uh, property tax values in the city. Uh, for 23-24, we have $3 million in the projected revenue, and that's uh, in 24-25, 3.1 million. The tax um, 
dollars are always based on the previous year roll. So the 23-24 is based on the 2022 roll. So those properties that change hands, you know, people selling properties, something new, acquiring it, they get reassessed. There is a little bit of a slowdown right now. We didn't put a, a lot of growth in 24-25 just because of interest rates. I think people are holding on to properties they're not selling or people are not buying because they don't want to pay that high interest rate. Um, even people that own properties, this one here, I have a, a house, they don't need all those rooms, but to sell it and go buy something smaller, you're paying a higher interest rate. People are just not interested in doing that right now. So we get that pretty conservative. And then here is a view of the total general fund projected revenue. So I talked a little bit already about, I, I touched on property taxes, I touched on sales and other taxes. The franchise taxes, those are franchise fees that are paid, um, the 400,000 uh, by pub, for, from public utilities commissions for the use of rights of way. Um, licenses and permits includes our business license and permits. Uh, business licenses about half a million of this number, um, fines and penalties, parking citations, um, charges for services, these are the zoning, planning fees, um, any other services such as even the community center where it gets rented out, that's all in charges for services. Use of money and properties, this is, there's a lot in here. I know the description that we have right now is a little bit um, it can be improved and it will be within the system. I have a, another slide to go through this, mm -hmm. but it's basically rent, interest, um, and the revenue from the courts. So all that goes into that category. Intergovernmental, those are grant revenues. So we have grants. The reason this is going down is because we had um, a post reimbursement grant for training for PD. And back in 2022, um, the city was able to go back and get reimbursement for a number of years. So that number represented like five years of reimbursement. When the budget was created in 23, that number was carried over, assuming that that was on our going. So, the, so this number's inflated, and this is more realistic than what we can expect. Unless we get obviously new grants, and that's really a big change. Um, miscellaneous revenues, program revenue. This is where the cannabis revenue is. Um, we projected the 5%. Um, we projected 2.8 million in 23-24, and then 2.850 in 24-25. There may be some uh, impact, sales impact from Oxnard opening up. We also have some lounges that are going to open up, and we expect those to be in operation for these fiscal years and will mitigate that impact. Did you say you projected 2.8 and it came in at 2.9 for the current year? 2.9 is a projection for this year. Um, I thought I heard you say 2.8 though. In here. There's some other miscellaneous revenue that we get from like salvage sales in here. The bulk of it is, is cannabis. We kept it pretty flat to where we think we're going to come in this year. And that's because of the impact, uh, sales impact that may occur from new openings in the neighboring cities. Um, like, like I yeah. said, we do have the lounges in 24 yeah. I was going to say, so yes, we're looking at a, probably a slight decrease in the actual cannabis sales, but with the lounges coming online, we're expecting them to kind of uh, balance out the, the loss in the sales and stuff. So that's why we predict that it'll probably stay flat for the next couple of years. That's what you mean by flat? Right. Okay. Yeah. In terms of what we projected last year, I think we're conservative and we exceeded our projection. That's what I'm trying to get. Yeah. Yeah, because we still have some really strong months at the beginning of this fiscal year. It's yeah, but I'm just off. focused on what we projected last year mm -hmm. and what our actual is for this year, because last year we projected for this year. Right. So we, we seem to be, we we we're, not exactly we're not overestimating, we're, we're conservative and, and we're exceeding our, our... We're not overestimating, we didn't take it higher than last year. Okay. So the actual number here on page 29 in the electronic version um, says last year actual was uh, 3,149,077 and it has adopted or proposed, I would imagine, oh, and adopted for this year is 28. Um, so do we know where we are like right now? 
But in 20, actually 2022 was, was definitely stronger because that was yeah. still part of that pandemic too. They were still, I mean, we really got an increase during pandemic years. Um, <clears throat> Because based on these numbers here in, in the in the file, it looks like from um, 2023 to the proposed for 23-24 FY24, there's no change. From 23-24. In, in our projection, in the current projection. So and then there is an increase of uh, 50,000 yeah. for next year. Mm -hmm. What page are we on? 29. Thank you. Yeah, perhaps staff could let us no, know what, what page we're on when we're going with the slides. It would have been really helpful to have the slides, but as we're, I'm taking a lot of notes, but if you could just tell us what page we're, we're supposed to be on, that would be helpful. Yes, thank you. So for this fiscal year 2023, we projected 2 million, which is really what we projected in 2024, the same, 2.8. Um, and we are right now at 2.3. So we're 4.7 less than what we projected. As of right now, we still have May, June, and the payments for May are not due to the end of June. The June's not due to the end of July. So we always accrue for that June, uh, month of June. Um, and then the last item here, the cost allocation transfer in, um, roughly about $2 million. Those are the transfer ins. So this is the cost allocation for the, um, we have a couple of centralized service uh, departments that provide centralized service to other departments. A good example is like payroll, um, general fund payroll pays, processes payroll for all departments. So via the cost allocation plan, general fund gets reimbursed for that. And those numbers come directly from the cost allocation plan that is um, uh, completed by an outside company. We're actually updating the plan. Uh, we did an RFP a couple months ago, and they're in the process of finalizing that. So if there are any changes, and there probably will be some changes, um, we'll bring in to council for any adjustments at mid-year. So here is the breakdown. Um, oh, were there any other questions? I'm so sorry. On the other slide. Okay. Here's the breakdown of breakdown of views and uh, money and properties. As I mentioned, this includes uh, rents for city-owned properties, um, which includes like the peer concession, the houses um, that the city owns. It used to have. We used to have. The Little League was in here. We don't have any rents from the Little League in any of these numbers. Um, and the second uh, number is the interest on notes and investments. So that's the interest um, that the general fund receives uh, from the water utility enterprise funds for the notes that are outstanding um, related to the water plant. And that interest is fixed, is at 5%. And um, the difference that you see or the growth from 23 to 24 is primarily due to, um, as I mentioned earlier, the cities are looking at securing an agreement with an investment company, an investment firm to um, invest some of the liquid portfolio uh, into um, in investments, prudent investments, obviously under the government code um, that can generate uh, more investment revenue. And we brought that to council maybe a month ago, um, an RFP to, to, um, for investment services. So, so we're projecting about roughly under $400,000 incremental interest revenue resulting from those investments. I do have one question. Mm -hmm. Can you, you mentioned beach and pier concessions. What is that? The restaurant at the pier. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of that, what's the, the percentage? What's the, um, how does that work? They're in a tier. Like a sales base. Okay. Yeah. Tiered sales. Okay. Uh, how how yeah. is it? Understand me. Like, can we describe it? Uh, I mean, just. Yeah, we can, because there's a they they have a tier sales based on the on the sales 
on the amount of sales they make. Yeah, we can, we can Does it go that. down? Does it go up? Or do we know? We don't know. The more sales yeah. they make, the more percentage, percentage they get. Percentage of sales that they get. Mm -hmm. We can get that for you. I don't have a Okay. One more question mm -hmm. um, in this area. And um, so just trying to understand since sure. it's my first time reviewing uh, some of these. Um, so in the area of um, we have license permits and then we have uh, fines and penalty, you have parking citations, but then down a uh, couple of lines from that, there is a cost rec parking code enforcement. What is that? Page um, Page 20, uh, 27 and 28 shows. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. It begins on 27. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got. I was confused. I thought maybe they were just saying, but they're broken out. So I just wanted to know what the difference is in those two. So the code enforcement is specifically code enforcement. It says cost rec parking cost recovery slash code enforcement. So. I see it. That's a charge so. for service. Yes, it's I guess my question is really about um, if I look at a line item, let's say parking, mm -hmm. and I see the number, could there be a number that represents parking somewhere else, but is coded different? And those numbers should really, for me, I could look at them as a whole number. Uh, the same, uh, the same. I would say for um, it says parking, but then code enforcement, right? So it says code enforcement there, and then if there is another. I would imagine. I don't know. I don't know. If code enforcement is police speeding ticket. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So some of that would be code enforcement fines. Okay. Um, a lot of that's also uh, cost recovery for tows okay. and whatnot. So which are different from the uh, the parking citations. Okay. Um, and so the way that our HTE system is set up right now, mm -hmm. they basically code those differently. Okay. Once we get our new system in place, hopefully things will be a little bit. Simplified. So, so, in, uh, so services, so paying for a ticket, but not a parking ticket. So, for instance, if we need to, if somebody needs to pay for a vehicle release, um, say it's been towed and impounded, they come in and pay uh, for their vehicle release. That would be under this second. Got it. Great. Thank you. I, I just want to make the point that um, the city makes more money off parking citations than we do off parking permit fees. And so, am, am I correct in saying that? We get more revenue from parking citations than we get from beach parking machines, like $100,000 more. Yeah, and the beach parking machines, we brought that down. I, we may bring it back to council and maybe you're depending on where our actuals end up this year. The 425 is the budget, and we're under that right now. But a lot of that activity happens in the summer. It starts happening after Memorial Day. Um, so we did, um, we're projecting 350, that number may or may not increase. Right, but I just want to make the point that we're super aggressive with residents, but we're not so aggressive with our parking machine management out there getting people to pay parking, pay for parking. So I just wanted to point that out that we earn more from parking citations than our beach parking machines. I have one question about a grant that I don't see listed anywhere. Uh, the PD for mental health wellness got a $20,000 grant this year. So I don't see that listed. In 2023. Okay. So in regards to the grants in the past, um, uh, we'll find where we coded it. We were creating funds, accounts funds for every grant. So, was, so we're not necessarily doing that. We're gonna treat it more like project codes, kind of like we do CIP. Because that's where we have like the senior nutrition, the very small grants, CDBG, and we have all these, the different funds for the grant. Um, but I'll, I'll find where that um, is. Where did it come from? The grant, the state state organization, which well, I believe just came from Post. I'm not sure uh, how it was coded in, but it was given to every um, police department in California. 
based on their size. I'll look into that one. We have this, the concession information um, as well. So they do pay a base, the minimum base of monthly rent of a thousand is what they pay. And then they have the sales base um, of 5%. Uh, what the, the, I'm sorry, I'm going back to the, the concession with the Sursan Seafood. Seafood. Oh. The pure concession. Oh. I pulled up the agreement on that one. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So they have a minimum annual rent of $12,000. That's their base rent, so they want to get $1,000. Mm -hmm. And then they pay 5% sales of annual gross. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. And two and a half of non-tax assets. It's pretty cheap. Yeah, no kidding. And my and my last question in this area, if you don't mind, is um, yeah. So my last question in this area is the community benefit fund. I see there is an actual for last fiscal year, but there's nothing for. Yeah, that's another one of those where we have a separate fund for it, but it's really a pass through. So it's a reimbursement, right? And so we're booking that on the balance sheet, and um, it's not because it's a really, there's always a timing difference between the time that, from the time that we pay um, the agreements and they get reimbursement report. So it's really, uh, we're, we're booking it through the balance sheet now. Yeah. So same topic, so not an additional mm -hmm. question. <laughs> so why is it only 36,000? I thought there was more, there was more funding in that. For community benefit community fund? Is, no, community benefit fund is over 100,000. This is 100,000 plus in a CPI adjusted. Okay. So it's usually like 118, 120,000. I think what that's the left. fund balance. No. Yeah, that's what we have left. That's what, what we haven't From, spent. That we haven't spent. No, no, no. This says actual for 2021, 2022. So fiscal year 2022 says 36,580. Look, this transferred in. So I'm wondering, I'm just asking the question. That's the transfer in okay. because it's just in a different bucket, a different fund. Mm -hmm. So when we pay the invoices, we pay out of the general fund. So we transfer in. Okay, so I'm oh, still trying to get to the basis of if it's, I understand, uh, transfer. So does this mean that there were no other charges where you had to transfer out of the other account to an individual? Is this all that we spent in that community yes, budget we that's have not available to us? Yes, we have not spent it all. We still have to allocate um, some things. And we get it every year. Mm -hmm. So now we're at FY. So it carries over year. if whatever we don't spend last year, it carries, carries over. Carries over. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Carry okay. Over. So we don't lose anything. Yeah. Is there a, is there a time where um, we get to a point to where we can't carry over anymore? That we meet we've reached a level that doesn't allow carryover. I don't can really we just carry over? Uh, 2036 when they stop the revenue uh, right so we yeah. can continue to turn yeah. okay so i'll just make i'll just say it while we're here talking about it if we're not spending it um in fy 21 uh there it becomes harder to spend a balance of that kind of funding specifically if it's in collaboration with another organization and you have to come to some agreement i thought yeah, yeah. to actually do so it just gets harder to yeah. spend so I just want to make sure that we are keeping our eye out on that and that we're continuing to spend it since it is money that we are just being gifted. I mean, not gifted. We'll get it. So it, you can see the, the allocated amount here on page 31. It can only be allocated when we have the meetings, when we set with we'll the board and discuss. Yeah, so I understand. So that's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. If we only spend 36 can in FY21, I'm not really sure. 22, I'm not really sure what we spent this year. So it, it's established as a community benefit. So are we not doing our part? Well, no, we are. We just have, we have to agree, the port and, and us have to agree on what we're going to allocate it for. And we haven't agreed on all of them. So which is our next meeting is this okay, next week. Right, right. So we have yeah, to this, come up with other projects. And historically, we have not had a um, process, a good working process for spending those funds. We've corrected that 
um, in the last year or so. Last year, yeah. And so we are getting better at spending those funds. Um, so let me one more question. Process. So one more thing. So if we've spent some funding to, do you know if we spent funding today? This fiscal year. This fiscal year. It might not. Yeah. Yes, we have. We have a. And can we I think a portion of it, like, went to our beach festival. Okay. It goes to different. Communities. There is a. So, so that's the last question I have. Yeah. I would really like to know how we're sure. doing with that because it really speaks to: Are we really doing what we set that money aside every year, right, to do if we're not doing? And then, the, um, yes, and there is a breakdown. There is a spreadsheet which shows which projects have been approved after spending. For instance, the Bart. Uh, the Bard Memorial, um, part mm -hmm. of, yeah, the monument, it's been on there for many years, but that's not our project, that's the port's project, so it's just sitting there. We're next, um, though. But, and then the, you have to also know that the um, concept of community development might not be <coughs> how, how you think about it on, on face value. It's, it doesn't necessarily mean community benefit no, for no, the no. community. I, I so, understand. We yeah. have had several conversations. Good. So okay, I get thank you. What's the number? We spent thirty seven thousand. Okay. And we're at we're at the end of FY twenty two. We I mean, paid um, almost yeah, yeah. FY twenty three, so uh, that's good. Yeah. I think you but no. and there's a port meeting this week, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. The, the yeah, the agreements that are paid out right away are like the ones that go to organizations. We have we get the agreement and we send out the check. It's more you know, the ones that carry over the projects. The, the projects that we want to have them carried over. I'm I'm good. I think yeah. just having the conversation so is good enough. Yeah. And then the grant, um, we found the wellness. The wellness grant is actually in the actual. We received it. It wasn't budgeted for because it was just. Um, a, but it is in our actual numbers under local grants and reimbursements. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, just going back to the slide, um, again, the um, revenue from the four agreements, that's going up about a little over $300,000 for all three agreements. And those uh, projections came directly from the port. That's what they expect, um, the revenues to the city, uh, the growth to the city. <laughs> And then I talked about the beach parking. So now let's take a look at the general fund expenditures. What page and is that? Thirty-seven. Thank you. And so for fiscal year 22 23, uh, excluding CIP, um, we have a 26.8 of approved expenditures. In 23 24, uh, the uh, proposed budget is 26.5, and in 24 25, is 26.8. Um, so again, uh, we're uh, looking at the next uh, 23 24 budget just slightly less than the approved for uh, this fiscal year. And again, I just want to ask. I'm, um, I'm not following that because the adopted 22-23 budget says 30 million. It, yeah, it excludes. So in the previous years, we included CIP and in operating. Um, we're pulling out CIP and we're presenting it separately. So capital improvement projects are not um, in the operating. So I pulled that out in order to show apples to apples. Operating budget. Does that make sense? <laughs> so we could put a footnote under here that uh, 2223 total general fund includes CIP includes CIP projects. Includes, and then you'll see later when I go through CIP, a lot of those projects actually are not going to be completed this year. They're rolling over to next year. So for the purposes but, of page 37. Mm -hmm. The bottom line. Yes. None of those numbers include. Wait. Those numbers. All of them include CIP. All of them do, and I'm going to share the next slide. I'm going to share the um, expenditures by department, and those include CIP because that's how we were presenting the budget in the past. So if you look at all of these expenses, these are the expenses by department. 
um, these include CIP, so what I did to take a look at the bottom line, apple to apple, I excluded the 3.7. And if you really look at by department, um, facilities and public works are the ones, because that's where a lot of the CIP projects um, were appropriated in those departments. You can see the difference in the budget. Um, general government is also a pretty large number. Not a lot of CIP in here, but what's in here is the purchase of the property that was recently uh, approved, 750000 and also the grant donation to the library. And so is there a page in our book that mirrors that slide? No. No. No, because... Just we pulled it because we're pulling this from the system. It's already in the system. So for presentation purposes, because I'm, we're presenting it separately and we're budgeting. Going forward, we're budgeting for it separately. Right. Um, but I would just make a suggestion that when we go public with our budget that we actually project why there's a difference. Because okay. had I not asked the question, we may not have covered this. Thank you. So this next slide is just a graph of the fiscal year 23, 24 expenditures by department. Again, operating, not like this is going forward. We're not including CIP in the operating. This is just um, uh, operating. Yeah. And you can see the breakdown by department. And then this is, um, again, the same information, but this is by category. So I wanna go through each of these categories, um, the salaries and benefits for the budget year at 16.7 million uh, for, 20, for this fiscal year, uh, the proposed budget, um, 18.2, so that's going up $1.4 million. And then in 24-25, 19.2, so another million dollar increase. And I'm going to go through um, salaries and benefits in more detail. Um, operating expenses are uh, 8.3. Again, some of it is because of the one-time non-recurring expenses that I just mentioned. The purchase of the property and the donation to the library um, uh, were projecting 6.6 .6 in the proposed and then 5.8. Again, we have the CIP in here. I'm backing it out just to get the numbers to be apples to apples. Um, internal service fund charges, that's the risk, so that's the insurance, property, workers' comp, and fleet. So we saw a reduction on, um, in, in uh, insurance, but there's also an increase in fleet due to gas prices. But that's basically, that's what you're seeing, that reduction, because we saw a reduction in, in insurance. Um, and then transfer south, this is when the general fund needs to transfer funds out to another fund. Um, that's uh, six thousand dollars. That really represents. We have the pension obligation bonds. Uh, those are kept in a separate fund, and so when we have to pay the fiscal agent fees, uh, uh, we we make a transfer. That's just one example. Uh, and so again, um, looking at the bottom uh, total expenditures, net of capital, uh, we're projecting to be at twenty six five and twenty six eight. So I really want to thank all the departments. So when we went through this budget cycle, we really went through each line item. Um, salaries and benefits and also operating expenses. And I'm going to go through some of the um, decisions and really the due diligence that was vested in this budget cycle to, to balance the budget. Um, so when we look at um, salaries and benefits, um, it's $18.2 million. It, there are 138 full-time positions in the budget. Uh, salaries and benefits, 68% of the general fund expenditures. And these numbers, the 18 million, includes all of the adjustments uh, from the just recently signed um, agreements, uh, the POA, which was the most recent. Uh, um, so in essence, there's the cost of living adjustment, the 4% and then the 5% for POA. Um, I wanted to point out, I call it a vacancy factor because in past practice, 
Unfilled positions were budgeted for the entire fiscal year. So we have unfilled positions that we budget the entire year. With this budget cycle, we really sat down and with those positions that are not expected to be filled for the entire year, we adjusted the budget for those months. So if I have a position, I know I'm not going to fill it um, for the first two months of the next year, I adjusted it by those two months. So I didn't put all of those dollars in the budget. And so that's really helping um, because when you look at the salaries and benefit increase of 1.4, the bottom line, we're still pretty flat to this year. And that's because a lot of um, conscientious decisions that were made when we were going through the budget. Um, Part-time positions were not funded. That's another past practice. We had a new intent, so we had a part-time position that was approved by council and is an approved position, but not filled. We budgeted for it. So these are not budgeted. I'm going to go through those numbers. Um, and then we have a couple of new requests that I will go through. Um, fiscal year 24-25, our um, salaries and benefits budget is 19.3. And you can see the percentage of growth is 72 percent of the general finance factors. And again, the COLA adjustments are included. The only thing that's not included in these numbers for POA is that it's it, an experience pay because we don't have the numbers yet. Um, so that number, whatever that number looks like, by the mid-year will bring that to council. Um, May I ask a question? Sure. So if I heard you correctly, you said when um, you have a position that's open and we know it's not going to be expensed, you, you take that out of the budget to be more accurate? We did not budget for it. Yeah, but, so if there's let's not just- for, Not for the entire year. Okay, so if somebody stops working for us, do you do the same? And it, because in, in one case, there, there's a, a new intent and I heard you say that we don't budget for that. If, if we have a position that's filled today, any position, we don't know when that position is people leave. We didn't factor, we didn't do a, a vacancy factor um, related to people leaving. And you know, when someone leaves, there's always uh, time to, it takes time to hire another person. So there's always a gap of, I would say at least two months. That we didn't factor in. Um, what we factor for is looking at the number of positions and how many unfilled positions we have. If we know we have a position that is approved and filled, but I'm going to fill it, but I'm not going to fill it probably till September. I only included nine months of that budget in the budget. Because those are positions that are currently unfilled that I know you know, it takes me two months to hire someone. I'm not going to put 12 months in the budget. But in years past, we knew that we had a bunch of budgeted positions mm -hmm. that were in the budget that weren't filled. And so it was kind of like an insurance policy towards not running a deficit. So, I mean, some people like yeah. to budget that way conservatively. It like, is a, it, yes. It's Yes, so you have the salary savings, our salary savings, I would, I would venture to say are going to be less mm -hmm. because of how we approach this budget cycle. And quite honestly, that really helped us to get with the first run, just to give a little bit of background of the budget, we put everything in and we were in a deficit. So then we went through the budget with each department and we went line item by line item. So salaries, benefits, and then operating. Yeah. Thank you. And so we have one new request, one new position, and six position reclassifications. Um, and I will go through that. Um, the, the new position request is an associate civil engineer, and um, the position will um, assist in delivering more capital projects. And as you'll see when I show you the capital budget, a lot of the budget that was appropriations that were appropriated for this fiscal year are being carried over to next year. Um, and the position is intended to be funded 25% uh, from the water plant, 25% from water utility, 25% gas tax, and 25% general fund. 
Um, so down below here, you can see the estimated um, budget. So is that something that the council has to approve, or, or you're just telling we us? No, we, 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 we approved it. We approved it. We approved this already? No, no, we approve it with the budget. It's in the Which, numbers. It's part of the proposed budget. So this position has not been approved it. by council. We approve it with the budget. Yeah. Right, so, okay. So, it's a proposed new position. Okay, and so will we get more information on that, or this is it? When we get to that department, I imagine we can ask questions. Uh, we can ask questions, Mark, and yeah. on the position. Are we going to go department by I department? Don't have department by department. Okay. Can I structure it so we want to start working for No, I'm happy to answer yeah. yeah. the question. Yeah. Question yeah. Yeah. So, uh, a couple of things. Uh, when I came on, uh, one of the things that brought to my attention really quick was our ability to deliver capital projects. Um, as part of that research, I talked to other department heads with how much public works does for them. And at the time, it's very little public works has been really just working on its own. So there's a desire citywide for public works to be more broad based and help other departments deliver their capital projects also. I then reached out to a couple of the former public works directors to find out what their experience had been. And in the past, the city had an associate civil engineer, a couple of senior civil engineers, a principal engineer, and an engineering technician. And we had worked our way down through the recession and the attrition to having just a principal engineer. So really, to develop the capability for delivering capital projects, we've got to have some staff. And if you look at some of our fund balances in water and the public Fort Wayne Water Agency, it shows that we've been budgeting for capital projects, but we really haven't been delivering capital projects. It's because we haven't had people to do that. So this was a response to that, was to add an associate engineer, um, and uh, we already had a vacant senior engineer, and Mr. Cable's been trying to fill those positions uh, to bolster our ability to, to deliver capital. So a portion of this, only a quarter of this would actually be general fund, the rest of it's all carried through those other enterprises. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Can we now that we're talking about CIP, can we just have a couple of a couple of questions? Um, and so it sounds like <laughs> so it, it sounds like this position would help us because one of the things I think I think that the council members have been um, kind of talking Frustrated. through and asking about is prioritization of CIP projects. So when we look at a list, we see all this stuff, but it really doesn't tell us what's getting done, which or when something is getting done. And so one of the things that I thought uh, that you, I used to use in the former life was that we were able to, we had an organization that would go through the list and prioritize based on quarter, FY23, FY second quarter, just we can expect that this stuff would be at least be done. In RSP or designs, 25%, 75% designs, or whatever it was. And so right now we just have a list. And we don't know which, which one's up next. What what and then when you look at the list and say, no, a battery somewhere, that can't be number one, but it's listed on the sheet. It's a big list. Line one, right? And so we would love to get to the point, I think, where we can be able to understand what's going on and that we can ultimately our constituents are saying. What is, what is this? What is this? Right. Sometimes it's right. happening. We right. just don't know that it's happening. That, that, that's a great comment because a lot of projects are multi year. Yes. It takes quite a long time to right. go through design, and maybe you're having to acquire property or easements. Sure. And some of the water lines we're talking about are, are going to be along those lines. Sure. Others are the sidewalk projects relatively quickly, right. six or eight months uh, to go through a process. Yeah. And so this good. position is someone who's going to help with that? Great. And Martha, in past practices, it's actually been the process for council to go in and prioritize how they want the CIP plan to go. But I always think that it should be our departments that come together and let us know infrastructure wise what's the most important projects that need to go first. Because I mean, we don't have, we have layman's knowledge on a lot of this stuff. And it would be much more beneficial and helpful for us to make that determination if we heard from our people as to what they believe is the most important projects. Yeah, we, that's something clear that we can do and work with other departments, you know, because it's yeah. not just the No, every, the every department. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, mean, to prioritize this. I think the council still can weigh in on prioritization, but it's got to be based on the yes. informed recommendation of staff, mm -hmm. which is basically how we, we operate. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it, it's been a frustrating process. I think you picked up on that, mm -hmm. and um, and I'll just throw it out there: dog park. You know, probably the pretty simple project, but it's still languishing out there. Um, so yeah, we we would love, and then you know, prioritizing safety as being our number one priority, which is something that I think gets lost 
in some of the things that we've approved. If we're addressing a safety issue, it should be, in my opinion, it should go to the top of the list. But infrastructure also, we need to have understanding from our engineers and our the experts in this as to what's the most important thing that we need to fix as a city yeah. also, because I don't have that understanding. Yeah. When I'm looking at the list. I would like to hear from those departments telling me, okay, this is really what we need to fix right now and let us prioritize yeah, that. Maybe you want to hold that for the capital, but some of those things are included in the capital budget this year, yeah, which is some water line replacements. We got some real water lines. We're seeing an increasing number of breakage. A pretty good indication it's time to replace those. Some water line looping, which is water quality issues. Uh, a lot of those things are built in, and they're but they're dependent on being able to build a position. And I tell you, we uh, we did hire our interview for senior engineer. We didn't find any qualified candidates, so we're going to wait and be going out again. It's a very tight market out there for trying to hire people. And I think we're much more competitive than we were as a city with some of the adjustments that we made, but still. A very tight labor market, hard to find people yeah. close. I, I think it's important that council also understand that certain things have to happen before a project gets implemented. I mean, you bring up water lines. I mean, perhaps we have water lines that need to be repaired at the same location where the dog park is. You can't just <laughs> go in and throw in the dog park without, you know, doing the infrastructure. You don't want to, one year and then yeah. dig it up for water right, don't want to do market. that. Yep. So we have to understand that. Yep. Thank you. Great. And so as I mentioned, we have a new position and we have six uh, position with classifications. So, that are being requested to continue to provide um, the exceptional level of service to customers, to our, our citizens. So these are the positions right now that are being the reclassifications. Um, some of these are promotional opportunities for staff and others are really consolidated, really taking two part-time positions into one full-time position. Um, assistant planner to associate planner and co-compliance officer to co-compliance officer senior and the engineer technician one, uh, tying that class of that position to all two. Um, these are more promotional in nature. Um, we did not budget for the existing position. Um, we're not intent, the, the intent is not to fill both positions, it's really to reclassify the system position for the entire. Um, the labor, we have two part time positions that we are requesting to convert to an irrigation technician full time position. And then the custodian, uh, one of the part time positions, we're requesting to be converted to a full time position. And um, that's um, needed in order to uh, the request is due to the fact that there's a lot of maintenance, uh, cleanup, so just to maintain the level of service, especially at the community center with a lot of the events that are going on. Um, and then we have an irrigation technician position that we're looking at converting to water services technician. Um, really, this is more of a customer service focus uh, uh, position that is going to be focusing on uh, customer requests, water conservation efforts. Um, I have a quick question about the yeah. custodian. That's it's not about the position, mm -hmm. but the custodian, there's one custodian on the city staff. We have four part time oh, okay. custodians. Four part time. Uh, four part time, and we're requesting to convert one of the part time into a full time. Okay. So and we're ready and, and they are the custodian for what? All the these buildings? For the entire city, for the city hall, for the uh, facilities, for the community center, and that's where the need is to add another, um, okay. either another half position, but it's a lot easier with group full time. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and service yeah. level improvement, we, mm -hmm. you're, yeah. there's a need for increased service, so mm -hmm. increased service level. And so based on the estimated budget for those positions, um, here is the impact of, for, to the general fund uh, for those uh, reclassifications. Water services technician, which we know, we're just changing the title. Change. Um, looking at eighty-eight thousand uh, dollars impact in 23-24, and then ninety-five thousand in um, twenty-four twenty-five. Could I hear? Um, 
can I get some more information on the justification for the promotional um, move on the associate planner? Sure. So again, that is uh, just what you said. It's a promotional opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an assistant planner. He actually um, came to us, uh, was an associate planner at Rockstar and came to us, uh, took a step down. Um, mm -hmm. And at this point, he is uh, performing at an associate level uh, position. So we felt it was justifiable to um, title him accordingly and compensate him for that. He basically has taken on a lot of the day-to-day -day planning duties that I used to do mm -hmm. uh, because I'll be looking at more of the long-range uh, planning uh, projects that we have coming on with general plans, the parks master plan, and whatnot. So, oh, that makes sense then. Yeah, yeah. so that's why we can And will you have any supervisory responsibilities? Uh, not yet, not unless we get like a planning technician or intern, but that's obviously not um, part of this list right now. But the work certainly is there, the, the, the increase in demand for the right. Right, projects. because I will be putting more, some of our, say, our annual cannabis reporting, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be taking over that as well. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I don't know if you had addressed this before, but for facilities and maintenance, mm -hmm. um, the adopted was four million, in, but it's usually like between one and two. Um, for 2022-2023, facilities, mm -hmm. maintenance. I believe that was the CIP reduction again? Yeah. Took out. Yeah, that was the facilities, yes, and public works have a lot of, it does usually work for most of the capital projects on. Okay. So that's what it's on, yeah. Um, and so I wanted to touch on the number of full-time, um, uh, the net increase is two, and I'm gonna go through a, a reconciliation of how um, that number came about. And then we're reducing the part-time positions. So this is, I broke down part-time and seasonal because the seasonal are always challenging to get them into a part-time position because they're here for you know, a number of months. And based on the number of hours that they're working, it's always like a fraction. So I rounded these numbers. Um, but um, these are really full, full-time equivalent. So these are part-time, full-time equivalent uh, positions. So we're really reducing six positions in total. And that's related to um, a lot of decisions I talked about that we they were funded before, they're not funded now. Um, we're going up to a net of two, and this is the new position for the civil engineer. Um, the custodian is obviously going from part time to full time, so that's another uh, full time position. The irrigation division, we're combining the two part time labor positions into one. And then we have an administrative specialist position in community development that based on the needs, the request to promote uh, an existing position, we're not going to fill that position. And so that's a reduction. Um, so the net is the net of the two positions at the time. And then here's the part time. So we have one administrative coordinator, two specialists, equivalent of one full time, uh, four annuitants, so that's two full time positions one intern, parking enforcement, we have two, we're not filling one, we only have one right now, we're not intending to fill the other. Park rangers, we had them at point two goal FTEs, so it's kind of funky, but it's 1.2 positions. So it really is a, a decrease of about six positions. Can I ask a question about the intern? Where was the intern placed? We had interns almost in a couple of departments. Um, we did keep one, we kept the one in public works because they intend to, to fill that position. Um, we had an intern um, in uh, HR. Uh, I think that's the one that we're not filling. It's the HR. So you have, so we're eliminating one out of how many? I mean, we're eliminating one out of four, three. <sighs> Sound like you just gave us at least three. Public works, HR, and uh, HR, and. Uh, I think there's one in housing, right? An intern in housing? Yeah. Yeah, there was. We've got, uh, we have one in city administration, we've got one in community development. We still have one. Um, and the public works, as we just mentioned as well. So yeah, it looks like we've still got three that we're keeping. Okay, okay. Yeah, I kept the one in community development. All right. I just wanted to make sure we weren't eliminating mm -hmm. our um, intern capacity entirely. No, so, well, and just, I mean, 
um, if we don't fund it. And so that's the other thing with um, the kind of make linear that we're, uh, we don't have a cushion, if you will, because we really went through this budget mm -hmm. and identified uh, reductions that going forward, and there's a need for an internship program, um, we'll be coming back to council okay. for that. Thank you. And so here is a summary of the uh, projected cost for the new ask for new position, the reclassifications, um, $134,000 in this year 23 24, and then $145,000 in 24 25, and then the reduction uh, of the six uh, part time positions. This is really just taking part time at $18 an hour, and so the final fill in. It's not in the budget. We're, we're uh, not including two hundred and thirty thousand for this position. So um, the next topic I wanted to talk about is pension costs, because obviously pension is a big component, a big cost of the salaries and benefits, um, and um, so the city contracts with CalPERS uh, for retirement benefits. Um, these are funded, you know, the proper retirement is funded by employer contributions, uh, members, and then their earnings on the investments. Um, is this in our notebook uh, at the back? So, perhaps? The pension plan? Right here. This extra. Yeah. You know, right here. It's part of the salaries and benefits. Oh, okay. It's part of the extra. That's what we gave. Yeah, I know. But I was looking for it in the book to see what was in there. Okay, never mind. That's... Um, it is, but it's kind of it's when you look it's at the It's buried in different departments. Right. Okay, got it. There is a summary on page twelve though as well. Oh, okay. Um, and so this is the page twelve summary. Um, this is the one and so the um, CalPERS uh, performs the actual valuations and they determine what the city contributions are going to be um, for the next uh, fiscal year. In um, the city makes two types of contributions to their retirement funds. One is a normal contribution and the other one is a payment towards the unfunded accrued liability. So I just want to talk a little bit about that. Um, the normal contribution is based on act, based on active employees, and that is paid through the payroll. So that's, that is paid through the payroll. The UAL, which is the unfunded accrued liability, that is the amount that is determined by CalPERS based on an amortization schedule um, for the city. That amortization schedule for the miscellaneous funds, which are the largest funds, um, miscellaneous safety and miscellaneous other. Um, that amortization schedule goes through 2021. So if the city makes these required payments every year, assuming all the assumptions that go into this valuation uh, remain the same, because those assumptions are a lot of assumptions, right? Mortality rates, payroll, um, age factors, and the unfunded accrued liability would be 100% funded at the end of 2021. And so that's the amortization that's now being uh, followed or the city's making payments based on that schedule. And the payments are made, we have an option, the cities have an option to pay it monthly or annually. Past practice um, uh, has been the city pays it up front so we prepay it and we get a little bit of savings, about three and a half percent interest saving by doing that, so $100,000. And um, so that's, those are the two contribution payments that the city makes. So, oh. Oh, yes. So I, I wanted to see the next slide. Oh, okay. Now that we have your um, handout, I'm <laughs> looking ahead. Um, so in this next slide, um, I wanted to share the funded percentage for each one of the plans. These are the largest plans, these are the miscellaneous plans um, before the, the reform, the pension reform. Um, you can see from uh, from June 30th, 2020 to June 30th, 21, the funded percentage has increased substantially. And these valuation reports are as of June 30th, 2021. That increase is really primarily due to the fact that in 2021, CalPERS um, experienced a 21.3% uh, 
grade data, preliminary grade data. And that's what these valuations that they did the report they were using is called one percent return. So very strong returns um, resulted in uh, the fund being um, some of the paper funds being over one hundred percent funded. Going forward, that would likely change because that, the returns are not sustaining at twenty one percent. But that that's just for that year, right? Correct. So this was the funded percentage the year before. Right. Um, and this is the funded percentage. The big jump is because of the return. Likely, we're going to go back some of because the returns are not sustained. But even if they were okay, let's looking forward to where we are now and with the economic downturn. So our UAL payments will go up because if, if the rate of return isn't there, right? Is that correct? The, because basically they, they, it's more than doubled. The uh, unfunded accrued liability is a factor of, yes, the return because that is the value of the assets. Right, so I just want to make the, the I'm just trying to make the point that even with yes. that great year behind mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. look at our payments, they're almost mm -hmm. doubled. And, and that's projected um, in. Okay, so the bottom section here, these are our two payments that we made. These are the normal costs as a percentage of pay. These are paid through payroll. This is based on active employees. This is a UAL. This is the payment the city makes to bring down the unfunded liability. And this is based on the amortization schedule in 2041. So 19 more years of payments. That are going up. That, that will go up and down depending on the returns. Yes, because it's the, it, the yeah, the return is the- There's an interest uh, rate fluctuation. Yeah, no, that's how they determine the unfunded liability. It's, no, it's based upon the, the, the CalPERS is targeted 7%. And if they exceed 7% in growth, then we have a year like 2021. Mm -hmm. But if they earn less than 7%, mm -hmm. then that's where our payments yeah. really increase. They're, they're actually using a discount rate of 6.8%. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, and so um, in regards to this, um, the pension, the city, myself, Tony, the city will be coming back at a future time. This is one of the areas that we want to take a look at to develop our reserve policy and really take a look at and really um, look and have a meeting or separate meetings, really more than one meeting, to take a look at what does that amortization schedule look like. The city does have opportunity to make additional discretionary payments to bring down that amortization schedule from 19 years to maybe 15 or 10. Um, so that all just has to be looked at uh, with a strategy in mind and then a policy in place so that we know going forward how we're going to But we also that. have a, uh, a trust set up, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. we can't lose sight of that. I think there's like three million maybe more in the yes. trust. Yes, and the trust is set up. Uh, most of that trust is open, so other pension employee benefits. We get a separate valuation for open, and then we have very similar to this where they tell us how much the minimum contribution is for that. And we make that contribution on an annual basis. Right, but we're, we, uh, we interact with a company called Parse. RSI. Parse. Parse is our- I understand, but we, we, there's a company called Retirement Stability Incorporated Retirement, RSI. Mm -hmm. um, Peter Constant. And he was working with us at some point, and I'd hope that we could re-engage with him. And, and mm -hmm. I mean, he works for a nonprofit to help public agencies stabilize their retirement benefit costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is um, one of the, I'd say longer term, but near future strategies is to take a look at this pension. Um, you'll see when I go through the uh, pension reserve policy and the revised policy that the pension is not part of it, um, because I feel like there's a lot in there. We really need to sit down and strategize and do our five-year forecast for the city to include um, projected revenues, expenditures, CIP, and then really take a look at how do we address the pension and how do we fund it. And so, um, so that was my detailed information uh, presentation on salaries and benefits, and now I want to talk about operating expenses. And as I mentioned, the operating expenses in 2022-23, uh, 
are um, 8.3, and in the budget years 23-24, uh, we're projecting 6.6, .6 and then 5.8. Um, in 22-23, as I mentioned, there were a couple of one-time and or non-recurring expenses that we did not budget for, um, some of them because they were one-time, and here are those expenses. So the purchase of the uh, property for $750,000, the library grant contribution of $254,000. Open Gov, we had the $55,000. Um, we still have ongoing software costs, but this was more of a setup, a conversion cost. That was a one time uh, that's not uh, in the budget because we're not going to be trying to pay that. Um, Civic Brick is another application software that we pay conversion costs for. And then the contingency. So the contingency, um, we had a contingency in the budget in 22-23, which we don't. So as I mentioned, if there are any expenditures that we need to, that we need, we don't have that contingency anymore. We'll have to be funded to also for appropriation for that. Mm -hmm. um, That's kind of concerning that we wouldn't have, isn't that just standard fact, budgeting practice to always have contingency funds set aside? Actually, not necessarily. I mean, we did have it in our existing policy, so we did have, you know, I'll, um, I'll go through the policy, okay. reserve policies, but in the reserve policies, there were a number of things um, that were included in there, but, um, and that was one of them, uh, but not, um, because it's really like a cushion. But it's also there, in, well, unless there's another source of funding, it's also there if we have um, a major emergency and we need to draw funds yeah. from somewhere. Yeah, and that's in the language now of the proposed uh, reserve policy. So okay. that, the, that states that the city manager, if there's an emergency, can okay. draw money from that committed fund and then fund to cancel. Okay, so, so it's somewhere. We just felt like, you know, if we need something, it has to be appropriated within the policy. Okay. Um, well, it's good to know it's somewhere. It's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then for the next two fiscal years, these are just projects that are notable. It's not all inclusive because we have a lot that's in that budget. But some of the, um, and these are not CIP, so these are operating uh, projects that are going to be, um, that are in the budget for the next two fiscal years. Obviously, this is a meeting, your meeting to, uh, recommend any changes in these projects or move them from uh, uh, one year to another. So this is kind of what, um, not all inclusive, but just highlights some of those um, projects. Is there any um, sand moving equipment? Yeah, yeah. Right somewhere? Well, I don't see it. I don't uh, have mid, mid Two new down. mowers and tractor for beach. Uh, right and so there's going to be four fire pits at the beach? Two, looks like. Uh, are we still trying to recover from what we lost? Two at 4,000. Oh, so only two? So expensive. do we, when we look at all this stuff, do we um, explore grants and everything that we could use to apply towards some of this stuff? I know there's right now there's a ton of different categories for grants, and do we have somebody that explores those options? Looks at grants. We don't specifically have a grant manager, but we explore the grants as they come, as, you know, as, as you council get. or as, by, yeah, depending on which department those grants are more applicable to. Um, so we have these in the budget, but certainly if there's a grant, um, we wouldn't we would use a grant for these expenses versus using the budget. You have nobody that goes out there and specifically looks to see if there are any grants to apply to any of the projects that we have. You just you hear about them um, as they come in or as how it is. Okay. Yeah, we don't specifically have a person on staff who specializes in grants and obtaining grants. Uh, but you do monitor and we do look monitor. For them. Yeah. Angela, she's our grant. Oh, okay. Hey guys. You're You're ready. Ready. <laughs> Man, you just got ball and told. <laughs> we have a grant tracking mechanism right now. It's, it's manual in Excel. We use HT. Um, we have converted that to um, to Tyler to manage the grants. And we, do have, we know how many grants we have, um, and we do manage those grants. 
I would just add that each department has different professional resources that were tapped into, whether it be listservs or uh, different associations, state associations, or what have you, uh, where we get grant opportunities. So the word recreation and how to communicate about that. I know with the public works, uh, they're often privy to uh, different opportunities and kind of vet those compared to uh, what projects we have on the books to see if we can substitute them. How do we get more than just two fire pits at the beach? Because I feel like <laughs> no. everybody's going to fight for the fire pits. Sure. I think mean, we can add more. Well, that's the intent good. of this meeting. Is, that, is today the day that we add them? Um, wow. That's a, is this a CIP? Is that a CIP project? To, no, this is not CIP. This is operating. Hmm. So if there are any modifications to the proposed budget, then we'll make those modifications. We'll bring it back um, when we do in June. June. Yep. And just to be clear on the fire pits, uh, one unit, and it's scalable at the council's direction, but one unit, so to speak, is two fire pits, a hot coal dispenser, and a pad to place those on. So, for instance, uh, Mayor, if you wanted to have eight would be four units uh, of those, and, and as the uh, finance director was just saying, it's, it's the council's discretion uh, and direction for how many uh, you want to authorize in the budget. So I would like to make a suggestion that we stay away from the hot cold thing because it, it's always full of trash and it never gets emptied. Well, it gets emptied, but so I don't know how that came out. But I would like to make the point that we lost picnic areas in 2012 to 13 and we haven't replaced those. So I'd hope that if we're going to do a fire pit, that it, it's, it's a replacement of that really nice picnic area that we lost that had a, a really nice fire pit. It was the picnic area is going to be replaced by our beach playground that's coming in that will include picnic areas. Um, but I'm suggesting that we should replace what we lost. Kind of like that swing set, that, that bigger swing set. Yeah, I mean, we, we had a brand new swing set. That Which is now being for our volleyball pits. <clears throat> Is. But again, I just want to just make the point that there's, I think, four picnic areas that we lost in 2012 and 13. And I would hope that we could bring them back. How many picnic areas are in a beach playground? Um, I'll have to ask Gabby that, but uh, I believe we've got a couple. We've also got this uh, swing set as well, should be um, upgraded to ADA accessible. Yeah. And what is the uh, Butler building? That is a so, Butler Building. Sorry, that's kind of a brand name. We probably shouldn't use that name. <laughs> Butler Building is basically those really simple steel frame buildings, like the one that got it uh, injured on the industrial. The tree fell down, took the roof off. Oh, okay. That's an old building, so it's, it's a replacement steel building. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's kind Why of do you call it Butler Building? Just that's the manufacturer of choice, like uh, Kleenex, I guess. We really should have said, you know, pre-manufactured steel okay. building. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I looked it up now. And then the economic development study community profile, what, what is that? It's pretty much what you were asking for at the last council meeting. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about yeah, that. That's, that's <laughs> that. I meant yeah. to talk to you about that today. <laughs> okay. So this is our more comprehensive uh, economic, economic development, development study. study. <laughs> okay. So there's no money on landscape design guidelines. Why is that? Actually, there is. There's uh, two hundred fifty thousand. Oh, because it's mm -hmm. broken in two lines. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Um, and so, in summary, for general fund uh, for the proposed budget, we're looking at again revenues of twenty six point nine in twenty three twenty four. And then total expenses 26.3, so we're looking at a surplus of $371,000. Yeah, and then in 24-25, um, revenues of 27.3, expenses at 26.8, and so a surplus of $459,000. Um, the only thing that is not included in here, as I mentioned, was the experience differential for QA, um, which Probably will absorb some of it. Um, we just don't know how much, or we're just going through the exercise of determining who's eligible for that. Um, and so the next um, <coughs> item that I wanted to cover was the reserves. And general fund reserves are um, 
based on the updated reserve policy, which pretty much mirrors what we had before on the top three. Um, like I said, the, um, there was something in the policy related to pension, which we really, as a city, did adhere to. It was mentioned that we should put two years of pension over a five-year period, so really 20% every year. Um, but the funds were not really being allocated to pension. And as I mentioned before, I think pension just deserves a lot of attention um, to generate a specific pension policy for the pension that um, it is not included in here. Obviously, once we have that policy in place, we'll include it as part of the reserves. Um, the three um, reserves that are in here are the economic emergency, which is minimum of six months of general fund operating expenses. Uh, stability reserve, 10% of general fund operating expenses. And this is a reserve where if we have some unexpected expenditures or shortfall in revenue, city manager can drop. It's like a savings reserve. account. <laughs> it's another set of sort of savings account. Yeah. And then the risk management is 50% of the risk liability. So the total risk liability. Um, how, how much does that amount to? So um, when I do the math, when we do the calculations <laughs> based on the uh, budget, uh, the proposed budget, the economic emergency, obviously that's for an economic catastrophe, um, 3.2 million, 13.2 million dollars, I'm sorry, um, and stability reserve 2.6, and then the risk management about 950,000 dollars. And I'm sorry, this is for 23, and then in 24, um, these are the numbers based on the uh, budget, in the budget. And this is always going to change because obviously it's a, it's a calculation based on operating expenses. Mm -hmm. So expenses go up. And it really gets trued up when we do the audit because that's when we know the true actual expenses. This is based on, on projections. Um, 24, 25, um, 17 million dollars. So you can see it growing. And actually, from 22, which is the audited year, um, the committed reserves for, for the APFR, the audited financial statements, uh, was 13.3 million. So that's what the audit is reflected as committed based on actual expenses and based on our policy. So that is going up because we have more expenses. And so really what happens is we have the unassigned fund balance. We, as we go through the calculation, we sweep some of that money. We put it in the committed reserve. So we're taking it from a um, pool of money, one bucket and fund to another. And so the next slide I want to show, what does that do to the unassigned fund balance? And the unassigned fund balance is the, um, the dollars that are available for expense appropriations, CIP, um, and here is um, a look at that. So we started off um, with a 16.7 million beginning unassigned fund balance. This is based on audited numbers. Um, based on projections, uh, we went through revenues, expenses, and then we had the one time expenditures. Um, this CIP is different from the 3.1. Uh, even though this is adopted budget, these are numbers of adopted budget. This is a more um, realistic uh, ex a CIP expenditures that we ex uh, tend to expend this year. Uh, because in order to, for me to come up with an assigned fund balance, um, most of this moved to here. So, um, and then this is the adjustment uh, to the committed reserve. So, we're taking 3.4, almost 3.5 million um, from the unassigned, and we're going to put it in a savings account. Um, and then this rolls forward, uh, starting with 20, this way with 23, 24. Um, this is the unassigned, 11.8. And again, we're looking at having a surplus of roughly 371,000. And then the CIP is being funded. This is general fund CIP. So the CIP in total is a lot more than the $3 million, but this is a CIP um, for the general fund. Um, the adjustment to the committed, obviously, is going to be smaller because the change the, the um, expenses are not changing much. Um, so the ending on the sign fund balance is projected to be $9.1 million. Uh, same math, um, we start with 9.1, and then uh, we're projecting a surplus of 459000 the CIP in year two of the budget is 1.4 general fund CIP, and the adjustment is $165,000. So we're really projecting right now to for the unassigned fund balance 
at the end of the 24-25 budget need to be just under $8 million. So yes. we, did I hear you correctly that we have pulled $5 million out of our unassigned fund balance and moved it to a savings account? Is that what you said? Uh, we haven't done any, we haven't moved anything, but this is basically yeah, the proposed that we would move, we would uh, right. reclassify. So, we okay, would reclassify so just, this. if we were to continue on this trajectory, we would have a, we wouldn't have a fund balance at some point down the road, right? Because we're going from 11 to nine to seven. So can you, exp that's not a structural deficit, but you could explain um, to us why that's a good thing if it is? This is a sure. Part of it is going to a reserve. So this money is still available. So we're just really reclassifying from, from the unassigned to a committed. Right, I know, but I'm just looking uh, at the top. You go from 16 to 11 to nine. Mm -hmm. So how do we part of explain this, that in a positive part of light? part is the CIP. The unassigned is funding for the CIP, is funding the CIP uh, for a general fund. I think what member Gama is, is trying to say is that, is it okay that it's going down? And that's the reason, one of the reasons that I personally want to do a talk to Mr. Tom Stewart, NRC manager, Charles, we're going to do a five-year projection, a forecast. It is not, we don't want this, this to continue. That's right. what I'm trying to. We do to... not want this to continue because seventeen million dollars today could be three million dollars three years from now, right? Um, so, but because it... it's really funding the CIP, so we're using it to fund CIP on this. We fund CIP through debt, so we're, we're, acquisition, we're... and or grants. So we're not experiencing a structural deficit with regards to our unassigned mm -hmm. fund balance. No, we are. I wouldn't say that we're experiencing a structural deficit. We still have a balanced budget, and we still have but our fund balance is going down. Seventeen million dollars in committed. Um, if I may, so we so the unassigned went down, but this committed went up from thirteen million in twenty twenty two to seventeen. So the other fund is going but, up. But again, we mm -hmm. we do not want to have our fund balance continue on that tra trajectory, right? I mean, but it looks like after next year, that's a huge chunk of infrastructure costs going towards CIP that we don't have to do every year. That's correct. And right. one of the reasons, again, why we want to look at this five year plan is because we will need to continue to look at our CIP program and plan accordingly, basically, um, you know, need to make sure that we can pay for these. Um, we may lock out and get some additional grants like we did with the Parks Grant, which would help offset some of it. But we look, need to look at the worst case scenario and be ready to come back to the council when we start talking about you know, this list of projects, um, how it will impact uh, the bottom line, basically, and whether or not we want to spread it out further so that we don't have those uh, that continued drop in the, uh, in the balance. It's it's a work of pro progress, basically, um, but we do, to answer your question, uh, Council Member Gama, do want to uh, plan for it and try not to see it drop. Uh, Is it asking, but again, do we all agree that we, we, we don't want to see our unassigned fund balance continuing getting lower and lower each year? Right, that's why not we want to do that correct. quite sustainable. It's why we need to be careful also on our CAP projects when it was just approved, the three million was approved by Council. So it has to be funded somehow. Right. Any other questions? So that's um, that was uh, my those were my slides uh, for general fund. I'm gonna cover the enterprise and other funds. Um, is there one okay or is there any the break or no, because we are inching closer to okay. our council. <laughs> okay. Um, so the enterprise and other funds um, are special revenue funds um, used to track revenue for a specific. So these are very restrictive funds. Um, grants, gas tax, uh, our proprietary funds, which are this 
at business life funds and uh, water storage, stormwater, where we really recover the cost via the um, and internal service funds are our risk and our fleet, um, which are um, uh, where we uh, code our um, all of our risk management and our fleet costs, and then those get allocated out to the different departments. And these um, slides are kind of in the um, they are in the uh, fund balance schedule, so that's where a lot of this information is. It's just compiled a little bit different. Um, so some of these are small uh, funds, and like I said, um, historically we created a lot of just created funds for different types of grants. Um, that you can see here on um, the Homeland Security, the Traffic Safety. Um, we're starting to put them all in a grant account, if you will, and then we're going to have uh, subsidiary accounts for it because it just gets really busy and there's small grants. Um, I wanted to point out the stormwater. That's one where these are projections. So at the end of the year, when actual costs come in, if the stormwater is in the negative position, that does get funded by general fund. Um, we didn't make the transfer right now because I wanted to show exactly where you were projected for each fund. Um, and then the other um, that is showing slightly negative is senior nutrition, and that's mostly to do with the timing of the reimbursements uh, when we send those out for reimbursement to the county. Um, the American Rescue Fund is in here because, again, it is a separate fund and we have to keep it in a separate fund. This is the operating uh, portion, so this is the 240000 that we're covering with the different licenses. Um, we still have 3.3 in the um, balance that we haven't signed. And that is in uh, CIP, so I'll cover okay. CIP. Mm -hmm. So this is just what's in the operating. Um, and then we have the community benefit, again, going in and out. Um, we're not going to account for it that way. We're going to put it in a balance sheet because it's really what has to get the money we paid out. Um, and then, Lupe, can you explain the bike path? Yeah, those are specific funds that we get are specifically uh, for a maintenance of bike paths, and they're very specific. So we have to, for these, even though they're small grants like the bike path and the Transportation Development Act, we get audited and we have to submit reporting on how those funds were spent. Which means you have could, to use it specifically yeah, for. Specific. Could we get a report on that? Because I think that has to do with Channel Island Boulevard. I'm not. I, anyways, get a, get a report. Where are the bike paths that apply to that grant? Sure. We can provide a general the detailed report of where we spend funds in these in the bike path specifically. Just uh, along those lines, who administers that particular grant, the bike path? These are administered by Public Works, obviously finance, um, administers all the, the, the accounting of All of it. the- But well, we work with, we, yeah, we do. Um, so all of these are uh, fall under finance and we work with the various departments. Okay, so but you're just talking Public Works does the bike track, not all of them. Oh no, not all of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the neighborhood preservation? Can you describe what that is and who administers that? That's uh, community sure. development. Yeah, that's okay. community development. And that's, um, again, uh, it's a special program that we have. Uh, actually, Jennifer in the back there administers it for us. And it primarily has to do at this point with our uh, rehab um, loan program. So um, as far as property maintenance, property improvements, okay. um, it's not been uh, very active lately, um, not for lack of trying, but just for lack of applications coming in. Um, but it is a program that we want to keep on the books of the board. Can we nominate, pro, um, if we see something that looks like it may qualify, can, can we nominate a property for that? It's actually um, a property owner. Um, so they come to us and, and with an application because they've got projects that... Right, but I'm just trying to figure out a way to, to utilize those funds because I could think of a number of properties. But can, is there a way for any of us to, to encourage people and look into it? or do? Well, we have to look at the actual specifics of the project, of, of the program first and see if it would allow something like that. Um, is it available to HOAs? Um, Jennifer... It's yeah, not, is it? It's primarily for single family, you know, say for instance, the neighborhood that we're sitting in right now. Uh, 
uh, this type of residential unit um, is what it's primarily for. And then the bike path, that means we have $14,000 at the end? Uh, for at bike the end of 23, 24, yeah, and then I have this slide for 24, 25. So those are the um, bike paths that we have for the gas, I mean, I'm sorry, for the bike path, we have 20000 so, estimated to be um, on that piece. And the gasoline tax, what's that for road improvements? Is it? I, uh, yes, it is. Yeah. So what else other than roads can we so use? So if we on? if we came up with a plan, I'm not saying that we have a plan, but let's just say if we came up with a plan to deal with Channel Islands and those reoccurring complaints, we, we would be able to use that those funds for some of those. No, that was uh, traffic safety. Mark, why don't you come up here and speak to that? You know, I'll talk to all three of those together just real quick. They all come. Uh, the TDA funds, we get a very small portion. Almost all of that goes to Gold Coast Transit to operate our bus system. So the cities that are part of the Gold Coast system, that's where their TDA funds, and we get a portion back that funds our bus stops. And so you'll see, and this one project's going on now, and it came through that. And the gas tax we're using for uh, street overlays and pavements. So we look at the capital budget. We've got Channel Islands Boulevard, Wainimi Road, Patterson, and something else in there. Uh, we program, you'll see those pro funds programmed to do a street overlay work. And the bike path funds, if I recall, that's strictly maintenance on bike paths. Uh, I have to look to see exactly which one so that is. it's not to expand and make more bike paths? No, there, there is funding for that. But I, if I recall this one, and just to remind me, I think this was the, the fund that's for maintenance only on, on our existing bike paths. Um, but there is funding available um, for any of the non-motorized for uh, basically reducing traffic and things you can generally find. Are there some SCAG grants that you're there's all kinds of grants yeah, out there for, for yeah. bike paths and for coordinating traffic signals and for trying to reduce congestion. Mm -hmm. And traffic yeah. safety. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Mm -hmm. And some I of am. the projects that Mark just mentioned are in the CIP. So this is um, operating, so it doesn't include CIP. Mm -hmm. And so here is the uh, summary for the water um, enterprise funds. And um, again, the water operations, the water plant, the water is all waste. Um, the water plant um, right now is showing a ending fund balance, a negative ending fund balance. And that has to do with the um, a restatement of pension a liability that we have just recently actually addressed and are working through uh, the PHW with That's what we approved recently. Correct. Right. Yeah, so there will be an injection of funds coming in to alleviate this kind of problem. And um, we are doing, in regards to the water operations, we're going to be doing another water based study. So the water based study that was done by the fellas a couple years ago, um, this is the last year um, that we have the information in the boots. Um, so we're going to be doing a, a, a new water based study. Well, let's not do what Oxnard did. And raise it like 15 percent. How much do they raise it? Raise it the water rates. Um, so again, this um, this will not um, this will be uh, funded and it will not it will be eliminated. Um, so the enterprise funds also have a reserve, and the reserve is three months of operating expenses. So those are the numbers for the fund reserves. The enterprise fund reserves based on their operating taxes. And then the internal service funds talked about this complete. Those um, really are in and out. So at the end of the year, everything gets allocated out to the departments. And then the drainage districts, we have three assessment districts, not drainage, I'm sorry, assessment districts. Um, so we have three different assessment, drainage, street line, and media districts, with special tax um, associated with those districts to fund the ongoing um, special district maintenance. And then the housing funds. Um, so housing authority, this is everything including the conventional housing program, the voucher program, and um, capital grant program. Um, 
that grant is uh, in a specific fund. So housing gets grants, it's, it's not it, it set up with a different fund. Um, we have a housing successor agency, which is managing the housing from the redevelopment agency uh, when they dissolve, and then service property. So those are the, the, the funds that are falling under what we call housing. Um, and here is the budget for $60 million. Um, same thing for 2024 and 25. And then I just wanted to mention, I know Gabby um, will be bringing um, a different, a, a new strategy to the housing board uh, in regards to uh, housing and optimizing how the housing uh, voucher program will enable the, um, the how it will enable uh, to have uh, modernization in provider affordable housing. I have a question on the surplus property sure. authority. We're supposed to eventually zero out mm -hmm. on that, right? Mm -hmm. um, do we have a projection of ahead as to what year we're going to be able to do that? We're working through that right now because we're dissolving the redevelopment agency. And so I'm currently working with a city attorney um, and an outside consultant to ensure that everything that the, all of the pieces that the city needs to do and most of the surface property are addressed before you resolve the redevelopment agency. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so CIP, uh, we wanted to include CIP in the budget. Typically CIP has been separate and adopted and separately. You'll see that a lot of the projects that are in um, in CIP are continuing projects. So as we talked about, continuation of uh, projects that have been approved by council. Um, and here is a summary of those uh, CIP projects. Uh, the general fund for 23, 24, $3 million. Total CIP is $14.6 million. So that's where some of the, like we talked about gas tax a little bit. Um, Almost $2 million is in the budget for CIP for gas tax. We have a million seventy-eight ARPA, and I'm going to cover ARPA separately in, in a separate slide. And then it's the water funds and wastewater. Um, and this um, number includes 65 total projects, 24 are new projects, and then 41 are continuing projects from returning over from this fiscal year that are not going to complete it. So, can we make, for example, if I wanted to make a request for increased traffic safety funds in our budget, how do we do that? I mean, how, how would I do it? Other than me making a statement right now that I think we need to dedicate some more funds to traffic safety. Um, you know, we see accidents all the time. Channel Islands is like a freeway. I mean, I got stuck at Lido the other day trying to do a U-turn and I swear I had to let 300 cars pass before I even had a chance to get across it. So um, how do we have a conversation on traffic safety, for example, or do we just? Well, at, at this point, you know, that would go back to needing to revisit the CIP itself, um, which wasn't really part of you know, the budgetary process at this point, you know, that was something that was ferreted out a little while ago. Um, and we want to bring that back as a separate item um, at, a, at a future date, but it's out of the purview right now of uh, the actual budget process. Right, but if I'm trying to prioritize traffic safety, safety being the, the buzzword, you know, so do we just say, oh, well, it's in the CIP project, we'll just, you know, yeah. but I mean, how do we, how do we have a policy driven discussion by this council to consider yep, traffic maybe. safety improvement measures? We'll make it an agenda item tonight at the council meeting. We don't have a council meeting tonight. Yeah, I know. Why do you keep saying I was like so I scared. I, I, was, I have my, <laughs> look at my tennis <laughs> shoes. I don't even have a tie on. What we it's don't want Monday. To, I just wanted to say at the last council meeting, I mentioned the um, SCAG grants um, that are available to us for traffic safety, um, bike lanes, um, you know, other traffic safety kinds of projects. And so I've been in discussion with SCAG about. Um, 
getting some money into Port Wyneming for those purposes, just to address some of the complaints that we've been receiving for citizens. So I hope to be bringing that to council soon. But um, in, in response to uh, the, Mayor the, Tim's uh, comment, it would be the proper way of doing this would be to bring it up as a council request at the next council. Or to go out and do my own research and then, no, no is that what no, we're, no? No. If, if we want to discuss it as a council as a whole, um, which it sounds like we do, um, again, that needs to be brought up through right. our standard process. Uh, but you, you can't just case. decide, hey, I'm going to put traffic safety on the agenda until you hear from us. I mean, you can't do that. I would rather have the council uh, request, let it. Me request right. it, basically. And add it to the list that we already have. Or at least add it for a discussion item. So at, at our next meeting, why don't you go ahead and bring that up? Okay. Um, and then we can go ahead if the council um, majority wants to, to study it, then we'll go ahead and agendize yeah. it for future. I think one thing about, uh, about the money, I, I don't really think it's about the money because I think if we, had to, if we really needed to do something and we had a, a, a project or something that we've identified, I believe the money will be there. We'll be able to get it done. But I think that the, the issue is not, you know, we, we know we hear from our constituents, they want things to be done. And we all want things to be done too, but we want the things that are going to be able to help whatever the situation is to be the thing. Yeah. And so it's getting to that. And I think if we can get to that, then we have a way to then talk about the money. But it's really never really just about the money because we can have money and not know what to do with it. Right. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Right. And then, you know, when do we become experts in traffic safety? Probably. We don't. We, we, we don't. don't have staff right. for that. We're in the right. okay. so, traffic department. So again, okay. there's, all right, we'll just table this to our next council meeting and take a vote. Tonight. tonight? Oh, yeah, we'll be over there. I don't know. It's been a long week. Misty thinks it's tonight. Okay. I've got my wrong shoes on. Oh, okay. I'm so glad that it's not, so thank you, Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> I was so I'm um, looking at um, we don't, we don't capital improvement projects for 2425. The total is 3.4 million dollars um, of course is general fund. Um, and you can see we have very little R5 because we're basically have it all operated for and the previous year. So there's 17 projects, eight new and nine continuing projects. Um, and again, in dividing at the CIP list, there were a lot of projects that were carried over from fiscal year 23. Um, we also staff took into consideration the Buffalo Springs Park and the efforts that were need to be um, placed to get that project on the way and completed. Um, and also the five year CIP, because we had a five year CIP fund. We have one that um, was originally created a couple of years ago. In, in the, uh, and so, uh, those projects can obviously be re, uh, re, uh, re assessed um, in, in another year. Um, and so, uh, next slide. I have the ARPA funds, and I wanted to provide a summary of where we are with those. So, the city received an allocation for ARPA of $5.2 million. That was the um, the allocation that was received, uh, council appropriated 5.1. It was a little bit of a shortfall, um, $80,000 that were not appropriated. Um, and uh, then we had a couple projects that came in under, and I'm gonna go through that. Um, so here are the ARPA appropriations of 5.1, and in fiscal year 22, uh, the amount spent was $551,000. And this year, we're projecting to spend five hundred. Uh, I'm sorry, seven hundred and thirty-two thousand. And in 2024, 1.6. And then the remainder, the 155 in 2025. Now, the Bubble and Springs. There were a couple of projects that were appropriated for Bubble and Springs uh, in the amount of two million dollars. And that, uh, with a grant now, that's going to be incorporated into the entire scope of the project. And then staff will be coming back to council with all the components of the project and appropriations for that. Um, and uh, the amounts that still remain to be appropriated is $124,000. So I mentioned 
the um, 80,000 was the difference between the appropriation and the initial, um, the, the allocation that the, the city received in the initial appropriation. Um, there was a difference um, in the hazardous payments in free and paid. So we paid 36,000 less than what was originally appropriated. And then the Friends of the Library as well, we had appropriated 20,000. Um, they were paid based on a revenue loss and they um, uh, received 13,000 based on the lost revenue um, during COVID. And so there's $7,000 that uh, are out there to be. Uh, so that means we still have $124,000 of ARPA funds that we can do correct. and use? Correct. When would we be able to talk about that? ARPA needs to be obligated by December 31st, 2024. Okay. And we're constantly by December 31st. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is out. an opportunity to program. <laughs> yes, there's a... And, and <laughs> there's, some, there's specific things that they can be used for. Yeah, which is, well, which is any, also staff supposed to be coming back to let us know exactly what that means. I think we asked somebody asked for that last time. Right, but I'm just saying even this this says 124,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But even with that, we get there's specific things that we can use that 124,000 for. Mm -hmm. But right. this is not. I, I, think, I think we all have. Well, when we were talking about the ARPA funds, I think we have a pretty good idea of what because it's all the stuff that we had already appropriated. It's the same categories. Yeah. But but you weren't here when we did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm like. Okay, <laughs> I need to get on the agenda. You're getting hangry. And um, that is the proposed balance budget for fiscal year 2024, presented for your review and consideration. We thank you for your time. And um, next steps, we are looking to have a budget hearing and budget adoption on June 6th. All right, six is a okay. good job. That's 24 yes, days ahead of time. A fifth? Isn't oh, it tonight? Sorry. It's the fifth. Uh, yeah, can, yes. can I ask some questions? But not, not later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Misty will be there. <laughs> On the capital improvement projects, uh, Wainimi Beach Sand Retention Wall Extension, uh, parentheses, period of flags, $250,000. Can I don't know if Mark can explain it a little bit better, but is that just the wall or, or what is that? Wall extension. I think that, yeah, that's the I, that was wall my from request. The pier a, two flag. Yeah. It was my request, and my request was says let's get the left side of the pier looking like the right side of the pier with. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, and then the Miranda Park building. That's a remodel of that building that's yeah. sitting there. Yeah, the one in Miranda Park. Mm -hmm. Would that allow us to open it up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because I saw Greg told me it was going to be a million dollars. Um. Okay, I think I'm good with that. Thank you again. Thank, Thank you. you. Good job, Scott. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. it's two hours. <laughs> um, well, so, so at our next <laughs> council meeting, that's when we can say, hey, uh, throw in two more fire pits or. Yes. Isn't it to me? Or is it today? We have oh. to vote for it. Oh. Okay. We have to agree. Okay, because I made some notes, so <laughs> I, I know. So we'll forward our notes to Tony. Yes. <laughs> so we want to do a vote next day. We adjourn? Mayor? Can we? Um, are we officially wait. adjourned? Mayor, are we adjourned? No, he wants to appropriate some money to some fire pits. Are we adjourned? I think he wants to appropriate some money to fire pits. Are we adjourned? Are we adjourned? Are we adjourned? Are we Serious question. I want to. Mayor, um, Edgar, have a recommendation um, for a motion in your yeah. Shirt. Yeah. So if you have any amendments, um, you guys can agree on that now, and then go ahead and uh, direct Ben to come back oh. at the next meeting to adopt yeah. that budget. For, like, any amendments? Should you but today is the day that we add them, right? Should you yes. so have them? All right. So yeah, council may now provide feedback on the proposed uh, draft budget. Are there any public comments regarding this item? I know I've asked already. Um, so the recommendation is to direct staff to in, incorporate any amendments and return uh, with a final budget for June 5th, 2023. So are there any uh, recommendation, um, some amendments? I know I have some, but I don't know if anyone else has any. Go ahead. Um, 
I was gonna suggest more fire pits. I don't know how many more you guys would like, but I was I was gonna recommend that we at least minimum at least a total of eight. But I was gonna suggest. Do we have space for eight in, mm -hmm. in all our beef? Can we, we need to have staff explore that and come back to us with the implications of having more fire pits and what that might mean for the community mm -hmm. and whether there's space in. I mean, I, I, after I, our beach playground, it, that's gonna take up a large portion of our right. beach. Yeah. All right, then can I can I have an amendment to add at least two more fire pits, but this year, because I know that was for 24, 25, and I'm just thinking like, why, why do we have to wait several uh, years? Uh, if I may, I would just like to try to see us get the picnic areas that we lost. Well, you can make an amendment to that, but I want to amend to that we add But when you fire say fire pit, are you saying picnic area? Because because to me, they go hand in hand. Well, we have picnic areas in our beach playground, so we need to find out whether they were all put back in, because we do have picnic areas in our new beach yeah. playgrounds coming and in. And I'd, I'd no, be but, but, more comfortable talking about both those um, items if we had our facilities person here and our parks person here, and they're not. Yeah, so I'd like well, to table it for our next council meeting. Well, I still want to make a motion to add two fire pits this year, which would be only $8,000. I mean, I mean, we're, this is only eight thousand dollars in my opinion. Well, it's also if we're going to discuss the motion, can we discuss? I mean, we haven't voted. I mean, we yeah, no, I haven't got in a second. But. Yeah, I mean, I I'm concerned about having too many fire pits on the beach and the implications of people on the beach at night and safety issues related to that. So I think it just requires a, a larger discussion. Nobody wants an extra two fire pits? I, I, I think, like I yeah. tried to say, is that the fire pits go with the picnic area because we just don't stick well, we can Well, we can talk about the picnic after. I'm, I'm trying to add one right now. Uh, so you can do your motion now. Yeah, so my motion is to add two fire pits on our beach for this year, 20, um, what was it, 2020? Yes. 2023, yeah. So, um, 2024, you want to add on to this? So yes. like, not, not the fall, not the not the next one, because that's what I saw that it was. Year one on. of this budget proposal yeah. by twenty four. At twenty twenty three twenty four. This this one. And okay. two more fire pits for a total of four. Yeah, and that's not a lot. That's just asking that we that means we would only have four at the end in in two years. So what's four fire pits? I mean, honestly, I'd rather have more, but if. Okay, so I'll second that. We can have a discussion. So let's let's if we can have a discussion, that would be great. Just, yeah. Can I go ahead and start? <laughs> so, as someone who was just at uh, um, um, I told you the Doc Wilder Doc Wilder Park last night, who has forty um, pits, and you can probably smell my, smell my hair mm -hmm. and my purse. Um, but they have a park that has that closes at ten o'clock, right? gate people can't get in there after so so it closes down at 10 o'clock um so our beaches they're open 24 hours someone could go to the pit at any time and start we already approved we already on, our, on one of your first meetings we approved a, a gate okay so good I, I didn't hear that so there's a gate around the pit each no i mean at our parking lot oh at, at that's on the pier and on the parking structure people would just step over that and go so all, all I'm saying is that um, our beach is an open beach. Um, right now, we don't have, uh, a, I think we have, the only thing that we have a time set for is the pier. Is that correct? But people can't go on a pier. We voted on that. But we're going to get gay and we can't go on a pier. But the beach can be accessed at any time. And so um, I would imagine, you know, there's safety implications with a fire. You know, people can get hurt. I mean, is that going to be something that we're responsible for, or how is that? See, there has I don't I don't for me there hasn't been enough discussion to say whether you know what the implications are. Well, we're already have. getting two already. So I'm just well, asking. Well, that's for two that's more. a proposal. No, so I think I, no, 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 those are when did no, you all are. you all approve that? I mean, it's it's on there. Well, yeah. yeah. So I, we've got. Two on the list for twenty four twenty five okay. right now. So yeah. what what conversation have you all had about security no. and safety and things no. like that? 
Yeah, there really hasn't been one. Um, I know our facilities uh, director actually just came back in, but we've, we've not had an actual discussion on the safety and the, um, because for instance, she mentioned that it could also be used for, for by the homeless and whatnot as well. Exactly. Um, and you know, yeah. right now we, we don't really um, police or have the capability of right. policing uh, the beach, you know, 24 seven basically. And I would so like to- kind of my you know, I, I agree with uh, Councilwoman um, uh, McQueen Lejean and would also like to know what the environmental implications are of burning wood at the beach, um, considering we've got Orman, a nature conservancy right next door. Um, I, I would just like to hear more information. I'm not opposed to the recreational value of the, the fire pits, but I just want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence and looking at all um, implications before we increase the number. I, I um again I I would hope that when we talk about fire pit we're talking about a picnic area because that's basically what the fire pit is at Wainimi Beach. It is a No, he's talking about No, if ground. I could talk about what's out there, they're barbecues. He's not and talking so, about well, barbecues though. He's talking about on the sand fire pit. This is his motion though, not not picnic tables. Okay, but I'm just trying to understand what's currently out there. And what is going to come? So if we're just going to stick a fire pit out there on the beach without a concrete pad and following the way we've had picnics now for 40, 50 years on Wanimi Beach, you know, I think we should follow our past practice. I mean, because we when, when there's a when there's a barbecue pit, it's attached to a picnic area with a table and an awning and the like. So, I mean, I'm in favor. And, and so what I'm trying to say is. If we whatever we approve, it should be tied to a picnic area because we lost six of them. Okay, but that wasn't what was asked for. So that's I know, not but again, are asking. we talking about putting a fire pit in the middle of the sand without anything else around it? Because if yes. that's what we're talking about, it's that's what we're vastly my, in San Diego Beach. Vastly they different. have fire pits. What They're, am I trying to talk? So I, want, I just want to finish. We have picnic areas, and every picnic area has a fire pit per se. Now, it may not be the one that's near the Alaska 261 Memorial where it's an actual fire pit that has a grill that you can barbecue on. If you go out to the beach where there's these picnic areas, they have an elevated barbecue. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is if we just approve a fire pit, we really don't know what we're approving. Are we going to stick a, a half barrel in the sand somewhere and call it a fire pit, or are we going to have a picnic area? I mean, they seem like they're going to be nice if they're $4,000 each. The concrete block. But nobody's water. telling us what it entails. So if I can provide a little bit of, of clarity, I had provided an informational memo to uh, council a few months back. So the units, as I've mentioned before, it's scalable. It would provide for a concrete pad two fire pits and a hot coal dispenser. That would be effectively the, the unit that could be installed. So it does not currently include any other picnic area amenities, um, but I know that's the discussion that certainly could be explored in council's direction. I mean, just for the record, I, I would like to add more picnic tables, so just so you know. So again, you know but I, this is something that we don't have currently on our beach. Right, that, but, and then just, like in regards to the hot coal dispenser, it sounds like a great idea, but it's being used as a trash can. So, you know, people come and, and they throw their trash in the hot coal place, not knowing that even though there's a sign there, I get it, you know, whatever. But so then a guy comes and puts his hot coals in there and now he lights plastic on fire. I mean, so, you know, I'm just no, no, I, I see pointing out that, that the, I, mean, I spent a lot of time on the beach and these are things that happen. And so we have to think about, so I don't like the idea of putting hot coal dispensers out there because we didn't have them for prior 50 years and we've had them now for i don't know two or three years and they, they don't seem to be used properly so. well look we're gonna get two fire pits either way but not for like another two years my suggestion is let's get two it's gonna take a, about a year anyways we can figure out where they're gonna be put from now to then i mean this is not gonna happen tomorrow yeah so I mean, did you did you enjoy going I, to I fire? I really enjoyed it. I like the idea, um, but um, 
again, as a council member, I want to make sure when I vote for something that I know that due diligence has been had and that we've had the conversations about safety, who's responsible, you know, what do we, are we now, uh, you know, people are, can be out there anytime they want to go out there, light a fire, bomb fire. I mean, I just hadn't had the conversation with you guys. So I well, one of my constituents was the one that told me, hey, Bobby, you guys can make money if, if, if you I did. Love it. If you did monitor and say, hey, let's charge, like he was saying, like $20 an hour, that people would pay that. And he said he would pay it. Um, I know I, when I went up to Portland, I saw that when people parked, it was all through an app. And he was, and so he said something similar like that. It's like, hey, you pay for it in advance and then you go and you reserve it. But yeah, obviously, staff would have to come and make sure that, hey, you got to move on. You know, so, in San Diego, um, they have a very similar thing. It's, I can't remember which beach, uh, El Coronado Beach has fire pits and open to the public and anyone can use them and they get a ton of people out there. I thought it was an awesome concept. And, and then in terms of the parking, I mean, we're still going to be having the gate. I mean, if we wanted to keep people out. But the parking lots are closed at a certain time, are they not? Yes, and the gate will close them down all. Even so so, so I, I would like you to amend um, your motion if you were to add that we will follow up with some discussions around safety and security. Oh, I'll, sure. yeah, I, th I think that's definitely necessary. Um, I'd like to amend my motion so that we, we can talk about safety and the implications of how staff are going to be taking care of the fire pits. I will but second that amendment. And just for further discussion, I, I would like to make sure that the residents mm -hmm. in the area are informed because um, your information is anecdotal. It's based on a few people who who had some positive experiences with fire pits, but we have to consider the residents that live in that area and, and make sure that they have an opportunity to weigh in as well. No, I agree. Uh, just like how I, I would have probably also liked that too when we when we set the times and when we can open up here. You know, I, I would have liked to have seen that happen too back then. But I, I agree. So. Um, Let's go ahead and have a vote, unless anybody wants to discuss anything else. Um, I'll do a roll call vote. And the motion again is to? The motion is to add two fire pits uh, for fiscal year 23-24, correct? Mm -hmm. And then to have a discussion on safety and implications on how staff will take care of the fire pits. So council member, member gone. Council member, <laughs> member Hernandez. Yes. Council member, member McLean Lejean? Yes. Council, oh no, member. Yeah. <laughs> Blackwell, member Brown is absent, and Mayor Pro Tem, Vice Chair Perez? Yes. And Mayor Chair Martinez. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I, I, I just want to bring this up. Um, we had, I was told that we have several volleyball courts, so we've already paid for them, right? Like we have them, like we still have set other volleyball courts that just haven't gone on on the on the beach. I know we have two in in the works for plan. Uh, Gabby, where are we at that? Please. So we do have an additional two that have been purchased, and we are going to be going out uh, to contract the installation of those two. And the locations have already been determined. Okay. And then I know uh, we had also talked about uh, possibly converting one of the tennis courts to like a, in, like a soccer, like is that still in the works? That is something that I'm still looking at, but you know, I would really caution the council to give us a little bit of leeway because we are in full design mode for the bubble of the springs and we are really swamped right now with a lot of projects. So it's something that we are taking a look at and it's something that will be done, but I just can't tell you when. But it's not in the budget. Um, no, it's not currently in the budget. Okay, so would it need to be budgeted? It needs, it needs to be budgeted. The cost is not going to be, it's not gonna be a lot for going to them, um, but it's just a matter of getting it done. Okay, then I'd, I'd like to make a motion to budget for the soccer court, at, at the tennis court. No. So are you just looking at, we're looking just at one, correct? Right? <laughs> Again, that's going to generate some discussion here because I have not heard that. I don't know what that's about. I don't know what's going to be eliminated in exchange for for a soccer field. A couple um, years ago, we approved the, um, 
What is it called? The Parks Master Plan. Parks, Parks Master, Master Plan, Plan, which had it in there. Right. So it's the conversion of one of the tennis courts into uh, like an in, uh, like a indoor outdoor soccer area. So it would be contained within the existing footprint of the tennis court, not be a totally new structure or field or anything like that. And it is, as Mayor Martinez mentioned, um, contemplated in the Parks Master Plan. Uh, yeah. And that was approved. Yes, that was approved uh, in 2021. Yeah, so yeah, like two two years ago. Yeah. And, and of course, it's going to come down to programming because of your, the fixtures that we are going to um, install are going to be able to be moved in order to or indoor soccer, but that's also going to have to do a lot with recreation and their ability to get the staff. But you said it wasn't going to be a lot. Like, how much do you project it would cost? It'll be about ten thousand dollars to redo the pools. I mean, all we're going to do is it's just move the poles, right? Right. That's all we're doing. Okay, because I just want to remind everyone. I mean, I know we have soccer fields, but they're not really good soccer fields. I've I've been doing my soccer pop ups, and I moved them from Bubbling Springs to Miranda Park just because Bubbling Springs Park is not big enough for soccer, and Miranda Park is good. We got we got rid of the gopher holes. We got rid of the weeds and the weeds, but. We it's did. still not like a flat surface for people like I mean I'm playing out there with my students and I still think I'm like I just hope nobody gets hurt luckily I have them sign the waivers but right. um, but the other thing to consider besides that is that once we open this up a lot of maybe some soccer teams are going to want to be using this area and the cleats that they use if they're not indoor soccer shoes they do a lot of damage to the current tennis courts so we are going to see additional maintenance that we're going to have to put money into to redo the courts because it's just the amount of damage that the cleats create to the tennis courts. It's it's a lot of damage. You'll if you visit. I don't think they Orchard play Park, with. I don't think they play with cleats, so they put their shoes. They do. They they don't. But some of the soccer teams will go out there with cleats. If you look at Orchard Park in Oxford, it's a great example. They have those movable tennis courts. Um, it's just it's bad. I mean, so it's just something for you to consider as we move forward. There's unintentional consequences of doing things um, that's going to generate additional money being spent. If I may, um, and listening to a whole bunch of different uh, people, um, so I'll, I'll back up and say the Parks Master Plan uh, was a concept. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the, the physical design that we need to look at. So my suggestion is is that. Um, if we want to consider that at some point, uh, again, we bring it back um, at a later date. Um, again, like we were discussing with your item earlier, Councilman Obama, um, and staff will go ahead and research that, uh, look at the costs, look at the implications. Um, we'll bring it back as an actual modification to the park itself, so that way the public has a chance to weigh in on it as well. Um, and at that point, if it looks like that it's a go, uh, we can look at like a mid-year adjustment if we need to uh, to the budget. Since since I since since Tony's been on as interim city manager, you know that every week I've been I've been asking like, hey, what's the update on this? What's the update? So you know, I, it's something that I care about, right. and right. you know, I, I keep bringing it up. And I know I don't necessarily want to keep going, I don't want to talk to Gabby directly, so I've been talking to you. So you're my middle person for 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 Gabby, right? But one of the things that I've gotten from our discussions is that like it, it's it's going to get done, but I don't feel like it's going to get done because I already learned my lesson from the prior city manager, where it's just like hey it's going to get done it's going to get done two years past and nothing happens. So that's what I don't want to see happen, especially because we do have our conversations on one on one. So I get the feeling that hey and you know that I talked about having something like having soccer like this summer. And I was told, yeah, I, it, it's not that hard to just take off the tennis net. Right. For your particular event coming up, that's something, again, we can look at uh, for that uh, for that event. Um, but again, this was contemplated uh, per the Parks Master Plan. So this isn't the uh, uh, first time that any of us are hearing about this. So um, it's just to make it permanent as part of you know, the Miranda Park improvements, we'll do that. But uh, we can certainly, because you have been mentioning you, you want to have your event uh, the, coming up when we've been talking about you know, the special use permit. I know we're getting off topic here right now, right. Um, but that's still something that, that we, and I have talked to Gabby about that all And I think we need to be very mindful that um, two years ago, we didn't anticipate that we were, well, in a way we did 
anticipate a grant, but the grant and the time that it's consuming um, staff, uh, I think we need to be really respective of that, but they are, their hands are tied right now and they're so involved with that project that to expect them to deliver um, something um, right away, uh, we shouldn't expect that. We, we need to let them complete this grant project. Well, well we, for the project, I wasn't expecting it to be done right away. All I'm trying to say is like, hey, let's, let's appropriate some money for the soccer court just because, I mean, I think soccer is the most popular sport in the nation and we don't even have any soccer fields. And I would just like to add that we've been told over and over and over again that improvements to the fields of all our parks fields are coming and they haven't come. And we just heard that you know it's still a risk out there. Um, so, you know. All I'm asking is uh, that we appropriate some money for a soccer court in the future. And I'm not even asking for that to be done the next year. I'm just saying, hey, I, I would just want to put it, like, we can even say for the following year after, and then we can still always have a discussion, let the public know. I think, um, yeah. I think staff just made a recommendation to agendize it for a later meeting. Is that what you were suggesting? That would be a suggestion okay. uh, for the permanent. Now, like I said, uh, Gabby and I have been talking about at least the, the temporary fix um, for uh, the event uh, in July. But okay, for a, a, an the actual permanent change, I think we should uh, look at that um, with further discussion. And again, if we're because again, if it requires new pavement or whatnot out there on a permanent basis, um, that is something that we need to be able to um, oh, look oh, into oh. further and budget accordingly. But and I would is, like to hear more about this event in July. I don't know if anything is about it. Well, it'll be coming forward. With yeah, I've been wanting to. Uh, I think I asked for it to get agenda so uh, a couple meetings ago, but I were just it's just being it's just waiting to get agenda so that I can so that I can talk about it. Yeah. It'll but be I, coming as a special use permit to you. Okay. So, are we done on the, on on the soccer for now? I mean, I, I still made a motion to get added on the budget, and I don't mind if this gets done 24, 25, you know, or if you, I know we're not trying to put any more pressure on the staff mm -hmm. or something like that. Appropriating uh, the budget, the appropriating funds doesn't necessarily I mean it's going to get done. Correct. So just okay. appropriating funds. So is there a second to the I'll second. Motion? Anybody want to entertain a discussion? Well, how much are we talking about? I'm recusing myself. Ten thousand dollars. Oh, you're recusing yourself for for Miranda soccer. The location I'm, of residence. Yes. Any discussion? No. Um, it, it's for CIP, is it? It's not a CIP. It's only ten thousand. You know, it's part of the ARPA. It's part of ARPA. I know, oh, but it's a capital yeah. improvement. It's not a capital improvement project. It's no. 10,000. Okay. Is everyone else in favor? Uh, oh, that, yeah. So Sorry. it can be covered with ARPA? That's well, I was going to say that it was just a CIP, but Laura's saying that it's not enough. Um, I, I'm just well, saying to get allocated. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just asking for the, out where they want to draw the money from. <laughs> so what are we doing? Okay, How can we get a vote? Council member, member Hernandez. Yes. Council member, member McQueen Lejean. Member Blackwell. Yes. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, Vice Chair Perez. Yes. And Mayor Martinez. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, please let the record reflect that Council member, member Gama recused himself. I'd like to make a motion to um, for staff to come back with a traffic safety study analysis so that we could elevate traffic safety along Channel Islands and Ventura Road to a high priority so that we could look at this is other I think they, they this had this asked for that to be asked for the you next one because this, this is just for budget. This is just for budget items. I'm asking to add a money in the budget to address traffic safety on Channel Islands and Ventura Road. Well, we, um, you don't, we don't know how much that's going to cost. We don't know if it's already been done. Well, there is traffic. There is a budget item for traffic. I, know, I think I did see that. Um, there is a bit. Like, we've heard, we've heard 
that we can't do anything. So I would like to get a fresh set of eyes. So I want yeah, to that's not true. When it and comes to specific, like put a signal here. No, you can't do that. No, that's not true. We, we spoke about um, the intersection at um, <clears throat> Anyways, um, I would like. Islands, to, I would like to. There's more to be done there. It's, I would like. Then I would like to elevate traffic safety with yeah. additional money so that we could take a hard look at it and try and come up with a new alternative. I, I think, uh, Mr. Spalding, did you want to say something? <laughs> oh, he just muted his microphone. So never mind. Oh, sorry. No, I'm good. Okay, continue. Lupit, is there any funds for traffic safety to do that study that member Gama is yeah, asking for? Yeah, 20,000. Currently appropriated? Yes, I think we have no appropriations right now. What's the special revenue funds for 24 25 under traffic safety says 20,000? That is the revenue we haven't appropriated that. We can take a look at that. So we can take a look at, if there's a request, a recommendation, we can take a look at where that will be funded and bring it back on the fifth and include that in the budget if it comes from that fund or um, how much do you think this study is you funds. think it's that twenty thousand dollars or we did it internally last well time. and then i think we need mark or mr Larkins to weigh in on it I, I spoke with a uh, kristen Deckis last week and she was she uh, brought up the uh, fact that they owe us a traffic study as well, so. But for when then why would we for it now? I know, but again, it seems to me that traffic should be elevated to a priority safety. I, I have a motion, if you all don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, so I uh, move that, and I'm gonna go through my whole motion thing. So I move <laughs> that, <laughs> will you come back with us at the, uh, is it the next meeting you used that earlier? June 5th? June 5th meeting with, um, type of funding that might be available uh, for such a survey um, but then I so that's one so can we go ahead and do we need to I'll second it okay can we go ahead? all in favor aye, aye. all opposed um, carry none motion carry and and secondly I would like to um, ask that um, staff uh, look into what we already have, what um, surveys we've already done as it relates to Channel Island and Ventura Road um, to see if we have something already. So if you can just do some kind of research and um, and then with that information and with the information from Lupi, then we can determine how we need to move forward. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Carry none. Motion carries. And then, okay. does anybody else want to incorporate any more amendments? No. no. Okay. Just so you know, you didn't you didn't add any more picnic tables, so I don't want to hear in the future that we they don't have any. You know, no, well, we, when we discuss so. barbecue pits, picnic tables will yeah. come up. No, it won't. Not the same discussion. <laughs> All right. So. I think we're good. I'd like to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 5.28 p.m. The next regular meeting is scheduled for Monday, June 5th, 2023. Did we have to do any other votes? No. No, that was it? Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.